How's it going everyone? Uh, let's see, today, uh, this is the, the last uh, cassette deck I have here in the garage to, to get ready. So I figured uh, we'd just get it buttoned up and ready to go and out of the way so I can uh, get it out of the garage and get it into the warehouse with the rest of the stuff that is ready. And then I got to start bringing stuff in from the warehouse that needs work done to it or checked out or whatever. But yeah, we're going to take a look at a realistic SCT-35 stereo cassette tape deck. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, produced 1988 to 1990 is the year years. So what is it, 3, 88, 89, 90? Yeah, three years this one was made. Uh, pretty good little cassette deck. Uh, this was another one that was kind of a kind of a cheaper cheaper deck. Uh, this one was eighty nine ninety five when uh, first hit the market. And that was probably in eighty eight, and then probably in ninety it was probably either ninety nine ninety five or one hundred and nine ninety five. Now figure probably every year that these uh, they would bump them up about 10 bucks uh, it's kind of a rule of thumb I, you know may not him they may have come down they may have been 79.95 but if they're sold enough they they do raise the price and kind of tweak a little bit here and there so we don't know for sure this is probably you know I don't think they did any revisions you know after producing the first one, I think they just kind of kept it in production uh, for the three years, year after year after year, and left everything the same with no revisions. Uh, unless they were having a problem, you know, inside with uh, a certain component, I'm sure they would revise it then. But other than that, no, I don't think there was many revisions on these. As long as they sold and they played and stayed out there and you weren't getting... Uh, too much warranty work. I'm sure they would just leave them out there and keep playing, so everybody could keep playing them, and and then they'd come out with a new model. Which I think, well, no, I'm not going to go there because I'm not sure about nothing on this. Uh, I didn't get real into depth as far as what came after the SCT 35, you know, in 1990. Or whatever I'm sure there was another one coming out what the new model was but pretty simple face power uh, this has the soft eject like all of them now do uh, they all of the companies started putting in this soft eject I think there was enough people complaining that they were probably rattling the tapes too much when they opened them and start kind of ruining your tape uh, headphone microphones, left and right microphones, Dolby NR, tape selector, you have your metal or normal, I don't know why two, if, oh, let's see, this one has metal, okay, metal, uh, CRO2, and normal, so normal would be this one, out and no let's see yeah normal would just be this one both of them out sorry about that had a doy moment uh, left and right level for recording that way if you have a tape or a song or whatever you want to uh, it's you know you want to uh, let's see you want to hear a little bit more of the lyrics you I think you can kind of bump this up and do your lyrics because on a stereo a lot of times you have lyrics on one and or bass whatever or you know you can adjust your level or if it's not your stereo is not playing true and it's coming out into the system where left we'll just go with left is at minus 8 dB but yet right is minus 13 you can adjust it up to 8 so you get a a level clear recording out of it 
Uh, backside, backside, backside. Okay, pretty simple. Line in is your input or mic if you're going to be recording your your beautiful voice. Uh, two sets of RCA jacks in and out for your lines. In is if you're recording off of your stereo, turntable, 8-track, reel-to-reel, -reel or whatever would come in here to the end and then you could record it and to listen to it at the same time you you have your out your out would come out and go to your receiver your out or your in on your receiver and your in would go to your out <laughs> oh, man uh, let's see noise reduction system manufactured under uh, License from Dolby Laboratories Licensing Corporation. Dolby and the uh, double D symbol are trademarks of Dolby, Dolby Laboratories Licensing Corporation. Caution, we're suffering like a truck, do not open. Uh, uh, realistic stereo cassette deck, catalog number 14 636 A. AC 120, 60 hertz, and the draw is 9 watts, which is pretty low. Custom manufactured in Kawea for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation, SCT-35, and there is the serial number in case somebody is interested. And see, we have the same date code as that last one, 8A6. Still haven't figured that out yet. And you have your limiting, your listed, what is that? Oh God, 282BUL audio accessories. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the inspection or licensing or whatever the hell it is. I've seen that quite a bit. This one actually has a place where you can put a, zip, or a zippy or a, or a tie wire tie so you can put your cord up if you're storing it but I think most people once they hook these up they, they stay hooked up it's dirty of course like everything I get and have on the channel I don't think I would know how to act if we got something in that was actually clean but I've explained to you before what we normally do is I'll get you set up in the stand and we will take the cover off of this and check it check the inside make sure we don't have any big blowouts in the circuit board or somebody's got aluminum foil on a fuse or anything like that just kind of check it out uh, check our power coming in at the transformer or if this has a transformer just to make sure everything is okay before we plug it in and uh, I do that because I do not buy these buy equipment just to do videos on I buy this stuff to clean up repair and sell retail so if I was to plug it in right now and we fried something on the inside and we couldn't fix it but if we would have taken the lid off of it and looked we could have taken care of the problem before we plugged it in it, then we have a better unit and I can still make money on it granted I know uh, a, great, a great video would be me plugging it in and either getting fried and big mushroom cloud coming up out of it you know and I'm standing around dancing with my hand on it because I can't let go of it or whatever that makes great videos but I'm sorry I do not do that I do retail on these so I want to make sure that they are in good condition on the inside before I plug them in and test them so I hope that clears that up again and I will get you set up over there and we'll take the top off of this and see what kind of wonders we have with our realistic okay looks like we got two screws Two Phillips screws on either side. I don't think there's anything on the back. Yeah, we got one on the back. Let's go ahead and we'll get rid of that one first. 
what's nice about this one is it has a has a metal back on it not like that one we did that everything the the back was plastic the hell was that one now we just did it not too long ago I don't even remember what the hell it was but it was a dual cassette deck and that one again was 1988 if I'm not mistaken and that one was $129.99 when it first came out I think the dual cassette decks might be I think they were a little bit more expensive at least they should be because you have a you have two mechanisms in them and both mechanisms are the same except they put put record on one of them put the record head on it on one one drive all right here we go huh ah. get you down Okay, power coming in, yeah, that's what those two screws are in the back, that's what's holding our transformer, the transformer is kind of mounted to the back plate, and not the circuit board, I wonder if they had a problem with it, with the base vibrating and everything, shaking them loose off of the circuit board. And this one, no fuse again. Interesting. Hmm. So I guess I figure you'll just uh, send everything back through the stereo and blow the stereo. <laughs> All right. Uh, these are usually frequency pots. At least that's what I'm going to keep calling them until somebody corrects me. Those two and that one. Uh, these other pots. Uh, sometimes our motor speed. We can, which may be this one here or one of these two. Uh, they're VRs anyway. VR? Yeah, VRs. And you have another one right up here. So you have four. But I don't see anything scary. Different style of deck on this one compared to the last one we did. And this one is actually not soldered to the circuit board up for that is that's our power so we can actually remove this whole deck out of here and work on it if we need to those belts are pretty pretty toasty ah this one this one has a nice nice big flat belt on it I like when they use the flat belts they seem to grip a little better. Here's our record lever. When you push record it pulls up another head and then turns on this switch right here. And that's what turns on the record mode. But yeah I guess this one was made in Kawia and the other one was Taiwan so yes we are going to have different styles of decks but that one pretty beefy looking cassette deck on that looks a lot better than that Taiwan deck hmm. all right let's see what do we have to do can we it looks like we can take out those three those two, what are those two? 
are the actual deck. Mm-hmm. Because what we need to do is get this front panel off so we can get to our screws. Maybe we may not have to. Because of the two screws coming up through, we may be able to sneak right in and take the top two, the bottom two, and pull that deck right out of there without pulling the face off of it, which makes it nice. And just need to make a note that our record lever, cable, rod, whatever is on our top top notch. It's a top notch. Okay, I guess since it's a spring, we'll call it the record spring. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop for a minute, go warm up my hands, and we're going to see if we... Oh, uh, let's tell you what. Why don't we hook this up and see what that deck's doing? I know we're going to need belts, but I'm just curious. I'm sure you are too, just to see what it does. Let's make sure it powers up too before we start tearing it apart and wanting to change belts on it and then put new belts on it and everything and plug it in, this thinking thing doesn't even work. <laughs> Alright, so let's... Uh, I'm going to put you back in your your high chair. Uh, we need... We need to get this... Okay, power is off. My hands are still cold, though. Oh, uh, where are we at? There we are. Okay, and we want line out, which is this one, red on the bottom, and black on the top. And I just threw something on the floor. I'll come over. Put my stereo on tape one. Can you even see what the hell we're doing? Yep, okay. Power. Ooh, we got us a little power indicator. Now I gotta find a. What did I do with my tapes? Interesting. The the deck is running. Our motor on our deck is actually running. I'm wondering. Wonder if it's not shutting off. Let's see, I get tired of ruining my my good tapes. This is a, that's a head cleaner. I don't want no stinking head cleaner. Bodges? We don't need no stinking bodges. What do I have here? We sing. 60 minutes, over 60 minutes of fun and songs. Yep. Okay, something is awry. Okay, we got fast forward. Okay, I told you that uh, get you down that uh, as soon as I turned it on. And see the deck is already spinning. So something is going on that is not shutting the deck off. Rewind. 
if something is not telling the deck to shut off. Yeah, that's play. All right, and we know what we gotta we gotta check into. Now I'm gonna go warm up my hands, and we'll get into tearing that out of there. Okay, let's let's get a plan of attack on this. I think what we should do first is unplug it before we go sticking our fingers in there. And I think we should take the deck out and clean it and see if that was what had happened. It was just gummy. And this could be one of the reasons why it was parked, too. And it was stopped being used is because it was, when you plug it in, it comes on. So I'm kind of wondering hmm, if maybe that is why it was parked in the first place. Or somebody, let's see, who's all, yeah, those will only go in one place. Uh, we've got a zippy get rid of. Cut that zippy tie without cutting wires. There. And it looks like we have one more zippy down in here that we need to snip. kind of out of the way. Now can we take this rod that spring off? It's kind of got a funky little end on it. It's got a spring so we might be able to just you know, get a hold of it and stretch it. Might need a different pair of pliers too. Yeah, these are smooth. I need something with some teeth on it. Okay. What's nice about this one is it does have a spring on it. So we can stretch it back a little bit. Didn't like that. Yeah, I got it bent a little bit. So it should be it should come up out of there now. somebody's out there telling me you're doing that wrong yeah. <laughs> I got moved There we are. We can fix him back up. All right, now let's. 
I'm still not convinced that those two bottom screws were the only ones that hold this back on. But, one way to find out. Normally, now it looks loose. Uh, counter belt. <coughs> okay, there's our deck. There should be a switch when you, like when you put it in play, like so. When it goes down, it should hit a switch and turn the motor and everything off. And at the moment, like I said before, I think the plan should be to clean this all up first because it, it's not hard to we can just plug this in and plug the plug the cassette deck back in and hit the power and see if it's still running okay let's let's get after this thing and get it cleaned up first okay let, let's see what we can do with this uh, I think we can we have to take the whole back off the motor assembly you know to get to our belts to even see we're gonna change them because if we have to tear this apart anyway to clean it we're gonna put new belts on it because I'm not gonna get about you know, get it all put back together and then turn around and have to tear it all back apart just because it needs belts and we didn't do it while we were in there. Okay, now, um, I'm thinking one of these two micro switches here turn the deck on. We have blue and red and yellow and purple. And they all go to the, this, and the uh, red and black off of the motor all go to this plug here. And this plug is, no, nope, that's going to be our, see we have little, little wires on that. Uh, all those little wires and then they're encased in, in the, the plastic here. That's going to be our left and right channel off of the head feeding the amplifier channel left and right channel this is going to be everything for our motor to turn on the deck is this plug right here this one let's see the yellow and purple is right now that is What switch is that? Let me spin that around real quick. Okay, that's our... This is our stop and eject. But it, it clicks on when you go down. So it should turn everything off and reset everything. And then it goes back down, turns back on. So I don't think. And then this one up here, the the blue and the red. See, it's it's in the up position right now. And if we t go to turn on the deck, either play or nope. 
that's the play it doesn't move anything there it goes see that little guy flipping back and forth okay so that one is just gonna turn on the play I'm gonna turn on the amplifier I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right so it could be that one right there that turns the deck right now it should be on right oh man that goes down when you push play so something is telling it to to stay running One little Phillips holding this one on. It's working. It's really hard to Yeah, it's touching the top one and the bottom one. How I can tell is when the center one moves up and, and hits the the top one, this top blade moves a little bit and when it comes back down that bottom blade moves a little bit. Now it could be that our oh, our contacts in there are dirty. And our little bitty micro switches. Gonna be. I want to be really careful because these are very. These are really thin. Me, you know they're really, really small. So it's kind of hard. You don't want to get too much in there and to where you're making them go out of adjustment so we're I just want to get these there we go that top one cleaned up a little bit Same with that one. Now I'm going to make sure they're both still moving. That I didn't get too big of a hunk in there and stretch them out. I'm just going to There we go. And then it'll help too when we clean this deck really good off spray. 
contact cleaner. I think that goes. It goes under that little lever. One screw and then there's a pin at the top that center centers that where it belongs. Okay. Okay, that one's good. And I don't know if you can see, but I did get a little bit of crud off of that micro switch. And now I want to. I'm going to do the same to this one. This one it's a hard one here working with stuff so small yeah got a little crud off of that that top one I know is it's touching that top one this bottom one looks a little a little bent like it was opened a little too much, open a little too much. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, see there's a little locating pin right there. It holds the top of that micro switch. In place with one screw. That's the only thing that really turns the deck on and off that I can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully we got that taken care of. Now, let's see, am I gonna, might not have to, might be able to leave those wires on. I'm gonna back you up a little bit so I can get you in the picture. See what the hell I'm doing. Could be this one. And it looks like I got two. And remember this where that goes. It 
goes right up above or right in between those two. Yep, and it's got a short screw. Okay, anything else? Yep. Looks like there's one more right here. That may be another long one. Yep. Is there a ground on it? Yeah. Got a black ground strap on that one. Alright, now, by all rights, we should be able to like we have one uh, one little screw in the hole uh, need a small screw small Phillips but a little bit bigger than that one I think that got it There's our flat belt. Can we get that one? Yep, looks like that one we can... Pull off. Okay, this... This um, flywheel, or whatever you want to call it, has a little plastic keeper on it that holds the pinch pin in place. That one we could take right off, which is good and we can you can see we got out here on the end you can see the remnants of somebody's cassette tape <laughs> on it. And look at this. That's all belt dust or something. I don't know. That's weird. Okay, cool. So we can keep this. We can keep that out of the way. And you can see the old grease. See the grease on it. Oh, God. That's... That's like wax that's on that thing. Yeah, so you know we'll have to get that all. Get it cleaned up best as possible anyway. So we'll kind of, we can kind of make a note here wherever you see grease. And if you want you can take a picture of it with your phone. And kind of mark where all you see grease on every, you know, in certain areas. And when you go to, you'll clean it up and get all the grease off of it. And then at least you'll know. Yeah. God, that's nasty. Where to put grease back on it. That's the back side. Front side, or we'll call it our play side. Can see a little bit down in there, which that is actually not not the worst. Okay, here's where our pinch pin comes up through here. We'll put some grease down in that after we're done. That's glue holding the spring in place so it doesn't pop off. You can see there was some there's some nasty crap here too so we'll get that all cleaned up as well uh, let's see this one we're gonna have to clean this one pretty extensively so I am gonna 
I'll get us set up. I'll get my hands warm and I'll get us set up and we can attack this thing and get it cleaned up. Alright, let's let's get this cleaned up. I think I got enough uh, contact cleaner in that one to, to get her cleaned up. And, and this one is going to take a little bit more. <coughs> to try and break break down some of this nasty well, that grease. It looks like it was uh, white lithium or or something. a little wider. I have some thinner belts. This is what came off of it. But the amount... Oh well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's get him taken care of first and I'll talk about it. Okay, now we want to find out everywhere it is sliding metal on metal. So we know every one of these buttons slide in, in right in here. So we're going to just put a little bit in there. Oops. Cute, huh? We'll put some in each one of those. Mm 
Okay, where else? We'll do one at a time. This is the... I think that's the stop. No, that's pause. Okay, it looks like we could use a little right in there and there. Next one. That's not even touching, but up in there. Okay, this one. like right down in there. Give me that. And this one. Down in there. Get in there. Come on. Now give me it back. Get that back. That one, that one, there, there, and that last one we could see all through there. My Q-tip fell apart. On a stick. Okay. Now let's, let's see on the other side. on this side that we need. Uh-huh. I see a couple wear areas. See one right down in there that's got the metal. Shiny. There. And then there's another one right down in there. It's got the metal shiny. If you know the metal shiny, it yeah got some on my pinch roller there. Let's see which one that's probably play. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's see, I don't want to keep winding that up. Alright, now, uh, let's see the This is where our pinch rod and big flywheel goes down through there. I'm using okay we need 
see the see the bottom belt goes on first and uh, so I need Okay, I give up. What did I do with them? Can't find my. Oh, there they are. Okay, let's see. There's a. There's our little plastic retainer, and it goes on the bottom side. Make sure we don't lose him. And then. There is there's a very small thrust washer that goes on first. It'll go down on there and to keep it down. I am going to put a little bit of grease down in there. Okay, there's our new belts. So the this one goes there. That'll go down. like so so it doesn't fall off like the oil off the pinch roller let's get that little plastic retainer up on there there we are Okay, the next one's going to be fun. We'll put her back together. There's no... No pins or anything that help us hold it together. started put on our motor oh, my pinched belt came off Let's see. Poker. Pa -pa 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 poker face.
Okay, why don't you want to line up? Battery died, and I had everything kind of put together, so I kind of, I just, I got her together. Okay, now... You remember, I know the little, this little screw goes right down in there. All right, let's get a couple of, a couple of scrooges in it. I think we could just put these top ones in. We don't have to hook up the record just in case. up the record lever. Okay, now let's, we can just plug it in and see if, and turn it on and see if our deck's going to start spinning right away. Yes. Okay, so we know that's still, and I still think it's, one of these. That is 
is the, that's the stock inject. That's the one that I thought would be the one that shuts off the deck. This is the one that I would, I would say, turns off the deck when the stop. Okay, what's the other? And the other one is play. Yeah, see that should turn it on. But it should be open. And it should be touching, making contact with those two. Nothing. So now we may have a problem on the circuit board. Okay, I'm going to check out a few things and then if I find out anything, I will bring you back. <laughs> Okay, this is the first one I have seen like this. Remember when we took the drive apart, I showed you the, the kind of the, the brown browning all around where the, the main belt goes, the, big, the flat one. On this one, when you turn it on, that motor spins all the time. The whole time that the, the deck is on, that motor is spinning. That's why the brown staining on it is because of that belt constantly turning. Now, let me get this ejected. Okay. You can see that brown on it. That's from that belt constantly turning all the time. Soon as soon as it is turned on, that belt is turning. Now to me that would be a little you know a little rough on the on the main motor but like I said that's this is the first one I have ever seen like that I mean so there's got to be probably quite a few of these 35s out there that need made that the main motor 
has gone out because of that belt turning all the time. You know, you figure you turn that if you turn it on you listen to a tape or a couple of tapes and it shuts off that continues to turn and what if you forget to you know you didn't turn it off turn the power off before you went to bed or or what have you that means that belt's going to be turning I I don't like that design. You know, I like if you turn it off. If you turn it off, everything should turn off. But you know, if that's the way it's supposed to be, then so be it. I just think it's kind of unnecessary use and wear and tear on your motor. But you know, who the hell am I to say anything? You know, they may have done the research and development on it and found that it works better. It, if the motor is always running so that means it's always in motion and when you put a tape in you won't get that little slow slow spot in the beginning as the motor and mechanism starts turning I don't know that's just a guess on my part I'm just saying it seems kind of kind of chintzy that you can't put a little switch on that when it when you stops playing that the whole mechanism turns off don't know but I do know it works you heard it okay we got our counter belt put on our deck's all screwed back in. It's all cleaned up. Uh, before I started playing tapes in it to make sure, I cleaned the heads on it. And the heads are all clean. You've watched me clean heads on the, on these cassette decks many a times. You just take a, a cotton bud on a stick with some alcohol, clean your heads record head, the play head, and the pinch roller. And that usually takes care of that. Uh, we cleaned the deck and everything, new belts. Uh, I washed up the top case so it's ready to go back on and we'll be ready to finish up on this one and we'll have another good cassette deck. So let me get the Uh, let's see. Before I do that, let's plug it back in. We will remember there, there. Let's see. Turn it on. Deck starts. Eject. Little Pat Benatar. Uh, let that. We'll let Pat play for a little while, and and then we'll put the cover on it, and we'll get this finished up.
Okay, there she is. We got our little realistic SCT-35 stereo cassette, te cassette tape deck all ready to go. Uh, I'm still not a big fan of the motor turning all the time, but you know, it, that's just the way this one is. First one I've run into like that, but I'm sure it's not going to be the last one I run into that does the same thing. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, we changed and serviced, changed the belts and serviced the deck and made sure everything works on it and everything does. Hardest part on these is just getting the deck cleaned up and new belts put on them. And usually pretty much that's all you have to do to get them up and running. But if you've never done them, now you know how to do one. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And by the way, don't forget about my Amazon link down below. If you're going to buy anything from Amazon, you click on my link. And if you buy it from my link, I get a small tip from whatever you buy. And it helps, helps support the channel. And what else helps support the channel? Hit the like button. Uh, that doesn't cost you anything to hit that like button. So until next time, I hope I see you on the next video. Until then... See ya.